Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today we're gonna to be taking a really fast look at We Create Vision software here. We're gonna be doing a real quick overview of it, showing you guys what it looks like, and uh, all the ins and outs about what I like and what I wanna see changed, and we're gonna go from there. So let's jump right over to this. All right, you guys, so as you can see, we are now in We Create's uh, software called We Create Make It! Exclamation point. Um, this is a quick look at their home screen. It's basically all of their pre-made designs that you can purchase and add to your canvas, or you can create a new project. You can also create a new project in the top right corner, and you can sign in with this little shadow silhouette here. Um, I'm not going to click on that because that has my login information, but that's where you would log into. Um, Lastly, on the home screen, you have your settings button here. We're gonna click on settings, and then if you have it plugged in by USB for right now, you can connect to Wi-Fi settings right here. If you have it uh, plugged in through Wi-Fi, this won't show up for some reason. So just a heads up on that, if it disappears, it means you're connected to Wi-Fi, and I'll show you how you can make sure there. You also have this thing called a per precise vector path selection. I'm not sure what that is, that may be something that I have to turn on with one of the issues that I have with the software so far that I want to see change that I'm going to highlight here in just a second. Next, you have auto alignment. You can turn that on or off. You can turn on your air assist uh, on or off, your autofocus. You have this thing called backlash. I'm not entirely sure if this is like curf or what this setting is here. Um, that I'm waiting on the official user manual and help section for this once the machine is released. If you know what that is, let me know. Next, you have the low, a lowered device to the bottom, and it's called idle mode. So basically, if you don't like it in the fully upright position and you want to shrink it, you'll click on idle mode here and you can turn that on. Transportation mode is the exact same thing as idle mode, except when you're gonna power off the device and uh, transport it from one place to another. And then lastly, you can upgrade your firmware and software down below, and that's pretty much it for settings. Now let's go ahead and jump into a new project here. As you can see, I have it connected by USB. You can switch to Wi-Fi in this top right section here by clicking the drop down arrow and then clicking on your Wi-Fi after you connected through settings. So you can choose whichever one you want there. As you can see here, I have the scrap piece of wood from my previous video that I talked all about the hardware. Um, and this is what the bed looks like. It's inside the bed right now. This is a camera top down view. Um, on the left hand side, you have all of the basic functions that comes with most laser engraver software like Glowforge, but Glowforge makes you put pay for premium. This is all free with the laser here. So you can add lines, rectangles, circles, text, you can change your text path, you can add images, you can add AI art images just like Glowforge's Premium, but this is free as well as of right now. They got the pen drawing software, you got an upload button so you can upload your own designs and then you can extract an image from this as well. Um, and then you have all these other tools such as group, ungroup, smart fill. I'm not sure what smart fill does. That may be a future thing that fixes one of the issues I was just talking about. And I'm going to cover here in just a second. You can align your, your um, items. You can flip them um, horizontal, vertical, up and down. So they have a lot of software all in here for you that's free, that's paid through like Glowforge if you've ever used Glowforge's software. So that's super cool. So let's go ahead and dive into some basic functions here. Um, on the right hand side is re refresh button. So if I pulled this material out, put a new one in, hit refresh, it'll rescan your bed with the camera and refresh that picture here of what it's looking at. Autofocus is it'll autofocus wherever you put your item that you want to engrave on here. I'll show you that here in just a second. And then this is a list of their materials for preset settings. Right now they just have these uh, six or so. Um, they plan on adding up to 50, I believe they said, in the future. So keep an eye out on that on the future update here. And then the splice interface thickness, I'm not sure what this does. I always keep it on three. Um, you can let me know what that does. I don't know if that involves curve or not, but we're gonna get some more information here in the future about this and we'll d dive deeper. I'm just showing you guys an overall broad look at this. 
And then lastly, in the top right corner is your cylindrical laser system. So this is like your uh, rotary tool. I have yet to use that yet. So we'll dive into this deeper in a future video as well. But really quickly, what I love about this is everything in the system itself works really well. So if I click text and I just click anywhere, it'll put in the text here. You can change this. And as long as you use the text within their system, it works flawlessly. You can either do a score, which they label as engrave. I wish they would change that to the word score. Or you can do a fill engrave, which is just a full engrave of the inside. And then there's a cut, which is uh, just a standard cut like usual. The cool thing about uh, an actual engrave, or in this case, fill engrave, they have all of their preset settings down here. So you can click on this and it'll literally let you select what shading you want. They've tested out all of these settings. So let's say we like this one the most. You just click on it and there it's updated all the settings and you can click out of it and you're ready to scan. Um, you have this unidirectional scanning or bi-directional bi scanning. I like bi-directional scanning because it's faster. You see the speed increases whenever you select that. I like that one, but you can maybe get different results or better results with unidirectional scanning. So just a heads up on that, that's super cool. You can change like line density, you can change anything you want manually if you don't like this pre-made ones here. Um, so that's super cool. Everything within the app itself, like I said, works flawlessly. They even have this AI art generator, which is free. And then once, let's say we want to import this, you can import it to your canvas and you can shrink it down to whatever size you need it. And you can print this photo just like it is anywhere on your artwork if you want to. If we wanted to print it there, we can. Um, I'm, and you can actually edit the image just like Lowforge 2, where you click edit, you can erase like backgrounds, you can do a manual erase, you can recrop the size of it. So there's so many features. You can even grayscale and change sharpness, but I'm not gonna go that far in depth here. I'm just giving you guys an overall general view. Now that we know that everything works great within their system all by itself, that's awesome. But we need to talk about when you upload your own designs. The one thing that I wanna see changed, and I'm sure they will change, but I wanna see this change, and I could be doing it wrong. Um, when you upload your own design, this is a coin that I made in 2020. I'm gonna zoom in here so, so you guys can see this. Every single um, option or vector in this is a different clickable object here. So none of it's pre-grouped by color, like Glowforge, for example. And I'm only using Glowforge as an example because I have a bunch of Glowforges. And that's what a lot of uh, you, you viewers have of mine. So um, you will have to individually click and hold shift and select all of this, all the way around. I'm gonna just stop here. And then you can change it to like a fill engrave. And what I thought was gonna be something that you could do is hit group. And you can hit group, it makes it a separate selection now and you can go back to fill engrave. But what I don't like about this is when I hit print, it doesn't just go side to side and do all of them at once. It'll do one and then it'll do the next one and the next one, even though it's grouped. So I thought maybe SmartFill would do it, but SmartFill doesn't do anything as of right now. That might be an update that they're doing. I was thinking if you selected everything, click SmartFill, it would automatically fill like this as an engraving, then these as a score, and then this as a cut, but it doesn't do that. Um, so I'm hoping that will be a change here in the future. And then you can click on like the outside back path, and make it a cut as well. And you guys get the idea, I hope, so far. If you need me to slow down or remake a video on this, let me know. Let me know that down in the comments below if you have any questions as well. I just wanted to do a really quick overview of this so you guys could see it all in person here. But that's pretty much everything that they have available so far. Um, hopefully you found this uh, video helpful. And like I said, I know I kind of rushed through it here. There's a lot to cover and they offer a lot for free in, included. So this is super cool if you want to use directly their software by itself. If you're going to be uploading your own designs, just be aware that you're going to have to go through and select all these individually as of right now. 
but I am pretty certain that they will be changing this in the future after there is feedback and that's just a real quick software update that they can fix. And uh, I would assume either I'm doing something wrong or there's something that they'll change in the future with that really soon. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll catch you guys in the next one.